Stay ready is the mentality birthed through the trials and triumphs in life as an NFL long snapper. Join me in conversations with teammates, mentors, friends, and family who help me realize stay ready is so much more. A deeply rooted principle of life in all things faith, family, and football. From Music Row in Nashville, welcome to Stay Ready, the podcast. Enjoy while it uh-huh. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Brother, this is yeah, I'm, I'm way more high tech. Getting more high tech here. <laughs> I got this little Bluetooth little board here. Playing a little bit of your music. Act Dixieland like you Delight. Know what you're doing. I like exactly, it. right? <laughs> and I'm not going to do that because we have a legitimate professional in the house today on the Stay Ready the Podcast. We got DJ Silver here, man. Thank you so much for coming today, man. Thank you. Long time overdue, man. Yeah, I appreciate you. So, uh, you know, we kind of just connected on uh, on Instagram yep. a while back. And, uh, yeah, man, I wanted to get you on here because I don't know much about you other than what I see on Instagram. Yeah. And I've se- obviously seen you at some shows. and the highlights. And uh, I hear you're a huge Dallas Cowboy I fan. Die uh, hard. Die Cowboy hard. Man. And so I want to have you in and just talk and yeah. get to know you better. And, uh, man, appreciate you taking the time out. No, thanks for uh, having coming. me. Yeah, man. Glad so to be in Nashville. Uh, yeah, you. absolutely. Dude, 80 degrees end of February. You got the snow in on you. Vegas. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know we were in video, so yeah. I like, put my man legs out. I yeah, like it. <laughs> no, appreciate it. Cool, man. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, I walked out today and I got my jeans on. I'm like, dude, what am I doing? I need to put some shorts on, man. <laughs> right? Put some flip flops on. I had some meetings today and I text them all. I was like, I'm wearing shorts, just letting you know. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Tomorrow it might be 12 degrees. So I'm wearing shorts. Yeah. So, uh, man, so let's. Let's talk about who you are, yeah, how you got to Nashville, how you got into DJing. You know, yeah. so you're from Texas, huh? I was born in Dallas. Spent most of my life in Austin. Really? I uh, got my first record deal in 2013, and and I kept like dual residencies. I, I full time in Austin. I had a condo in Nashville. Okay. And uh, I don't know. Probably three or four years later, I just made the full commit to Nashville. Yeah, yeah. So and and you know we kind of have the the common ground of obviously the Dallas Cowboys yeah. and played there this year. And, and I when I signed there, I remember you sent a message like, "Let's go, yeah. go boys!" Welcome to God's football team. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah. So take me back a little bit on uh, just the fandom you have of the team. Like when did it started all the entire life, pretty much. My entire life. I remember my first Halloween. I dressed as a Dallas Cowboy player. I mean, yeah. I uh, I just uh, my fam my dad's was a Cowboys fan. Yeah. His, his dad's dad was a Cowboys fan. You yeah, know? we're we're Texans, man. And yeah, so, like Cowboys is the only way only way of life. Yeah, us. I had Eddie on here from the Bobby Bone Show, and he's from Austin. We came back from Austin to Nashville together. That's crazy, huh? It's small little world. Isn't we were it? on uh, Kiss ninety six seven. Really, Austin together. Yeah. That's so funny, man. Small world, but he's he's like, man, if you're from Texas, yeah. I mean, 99% chance you're yeah, a Dallas Cowboys that's right, fan. That's right. And so you've, uh, I read up on a little, like, bio, and you've actually done performances at the games and I that have. kind of stuff. Yeah, so. I, um, you know, I probably shouldn't say this, but I never charged the Cowboys, so yeah. sorry for all the other teams I charge, but <laughs> it's my team, and I just, what I do is I they give my money to the Red Cross. Yeah. And I just, and my payment's a jersey for my kid. That's cool, man. Every year, so it'll say, you know, 2022. Yeah, yeah. Wake, 2023. Wake, yeah, so yeah. Cool. So how, how, when did you start doing that? Uh Probably six, five, six years ago. Oh wow! I'd have to look, but it's okay. been like that long. And you do like every home game, or just pick some? On I the, pick on the. They they send me the schedule, and I will pick two or three. Okay, cool. So, That's what's up, man. But I but I did you know all home games for the Raiders a couple years back. And, okay. And I do a lot of stuff in NFL across the country. That's really cool, but man. Cowboys are my, my team, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but a rough life. <laughs> yeah, you can. Well, you got to take it easy, man. You, you, the Raiders, right? That's a big. That's a big fan base as well, man. It's, I mean, it's, it is. It man. is. And, and that's what I talk about about being a Dallas Cowboy this year. It's like. You know, I've I've been on the Colts, the Chargers, the cool. Titans, um, the Jaguars, and this year the, the Cowboys, and uh, it, it it just kind of it's different, man. It's on a different level. It's the a different fandoms fan are different. Base. You know, yeah. it's the, the fan base is incredible. But I would compare it to the Raiders, man. They're yeah. they're diehard too. I mean, you when you know playing all the home Raiders games, you can just see just the people that have been Raiders fans their entire existence. Yeah, there. yeah, and I'm from the Bay Area, so I hated the Raiders. I, you know, obviously, when they were there in Oakland with the, the Niners across the Bay, it was like. That was a huge rivalry, and it was like kind of just a hey, Raiders fans on this side of the room, Niners fans That's on this right. side of the room, and man, it's just bumping heads Survival of all, the all season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But uh, I hated seeing them leave Oakland. Yeah. Um, because I, that, that fan base there is, I you, love playing there at the Coliseum. Do you think was, that affected the fan base at all? Um, a little bit, but I think over time, you know, people are going to make back. make Vegas like a destination. Let's go to Vegas. It's and it's yeah. not too far from the Bay Area. It's a quick little easy flight, hour flight, and then. But it's the same for like. Um, you know the Chargers, like you know, losing that fan base from San Diego, so moving to up to LA, yeah. and that that I think that really hurt them. It was it'd be like, you know, Oakland saying, "Hey, peace out, Oakland. We're gonna go back down to LA." Yeah. You yeah. know, like 
a slap but, in the face. I think it was. I think it was definitely not because I'm a Vegas kid, but it's like Vegas was a it was a great move for them. It opened their fans. There's no there's no bit. question about that. But I and I, I think over time you're still gonna you're gonna get that uh, the fans are still gonna come in and yeah. I, I think played, you're gonna always have those people that d- never want to change. Sure, sure. And, you know, right. but the Bay, the Oakland, that community deserved to have that team. They sure did. You know, they just they just could not come to an agreement with the city on getting a new stadium yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And obviously they lost the Warriors. Yeah. Pretty soon they're gonna lose the A's. So it's, that's just yeah, a tough. They're gonna hate to play Vegas for. before next year's over. I know, right? <laughs> hey, Vegas and have everything. Gonna have everything, but there. it's a great place to go. And, and also, and, like Oakland got to the part where the stigma of going to Oakland, like it's not safe. You no, it's, and it was very and true. It, and it's very true. It's like, yeah, I, you know, I, one of my friends told me he's like one of the only Walmart superstores ever went out of business is next to the Oakland Coliseum. Yeah, that tells all you need to know. Yeah, right? people can't even shop at Walmart. Well, my family, like my family, is like pretty much born and raised right next to Oakland, San Leandro. And when I played for the Colts, we played at the Coliseum on Christmas Eve. Yeah. So, of course, all my family was going to come to the game. And my, my grandmother, man, God bless her, like she she wore her Colts Overton jersey in the state. I'm like, and my, my dad right. is a, a San Leandro police officer. Like he'd work the game sometimes. Like this yeah. is not the place to walk in uh-uh. loud and proud with the, the, the opposing team's yeah. jersey on, you know. And so I'm like, here's my – 80 year old grandmother walking <laughs> in with the, with the Colts jersey right. on. And that was the game. That was the game where uh, Derek Carr got sacked and broke his leg yep. before they went to the playoffs. So, like, yep. they were pissed. Yeah. They and, were pissed. So, I'm like, get Nan out of here. Take your stuff. Hide your, hide your blue colors. Your get out. Just get out of here. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. But yeah, it, like you said, it's, it was not. I grew up going to games there. Yeah. But as time went on, it was like, dude, there was fights in the. In the bathrooms, there's people getting yeah. jumped in the stand. Like it was the just, only time they would make Sports Center were the brawls in the stands. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. black hole was yeah. was nasty, but it was one of the coolest places to play. And now, if you're a Raiders fan or, or you're a Raiders player, that was your spot. Oh yeah, but you. Anyone yeah. else? You know, they're like extra security. Yeah, 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 for sure. And it was like the stadium was grungy and just broken down. It, but it like, was Raiders. It was, yeah, it was the Raiders. It was the coolest. Like I remember walking out of the tunnel the first time and. Most of the hallways are all green and gold for the A's as well. Yeah. And you got wires hanging down, water dripping through the ceiling. Ridley like Field it style. just yeah, it was just nasty <laughs> right. and grimy. But I was like, this is the best. I loved that. Same with when I played at the candlestick yeah. before the Niners moved yeah. to Levi. But uh yeah, but like I said, the Dallas, man, different level, man. Jerry's world is crazy. It's great. And you walk in and they, they take you underneath and they drop you off down yep. there for the suites yeah. and you're just like there's not many times like I go to Star Wars, Star Wars World in Florida. I'm just speechless. Yeah. yeah. When I pull into the Cowboy Stadium, I'm like, yeah, God built this. Yeah. You know they- I mean? <laughs> and uh, you know, I've been to several games. There were time in my life when I when I was single before kids, I would fly yeah. no matter where in the world I was at. I'd fly home every Sunday to the Cowboys. Game. No way. Yeah. Dang. Well, I know Jerry has never missed a game either. Yeah. No, I missed a few. Yeah. I, I will tell you, we, uh, we were playing the Eagles. I say we. They were playing the Eagles, and it was like 27 to nothing at halftime. I just left. I went to Dallas Love Field and flew home. I just, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how much I, I'm a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Oh, so they were losing. You were that upset uh, that you are just like, uh, I, mean, I got to get out of here. And I'll tell you another another memory in that stadium is Thanksgiving Day. And we're talking about AT&T or the old stadium? The new one. The new one, all right. Yeah. And we're, we're there, and... RG3 is a quarterback for the Redskins. Yeah, yeah. You're not a Cowboys friend and cheer for the Redskins. Yeah. I don't care. You, yeah. Or well, anyone Eagles. in that division. You don't, pl- nah. you don't, Giants, the, Eagles. Yeah. yeah. That entire crowd was chanting RG3. I was like, you bunch of heathens. I left. But he's a Baylor guy. So is that, oh, is that I why? Kid, I mean, don't make it right. Yeah, you don't you make it right. You wear the wrong yeah. colors yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, but it's like, man, that, I, I just left. I just left. Yeah. That's how much I'm a Cowboys fan. I man. love it, man. So obviously this year didn't end the way we wanted to. Uh, it ended a little prematurely with you know yeah. losing to the Niners. I mean, so how how did you feel after that loss? You know, it, oh let me, let me take yeah. it back. How did you feel after we beat Tom Brady? Oh no, no, absolutely. You know, the thing is, you're going to take a win on the goat no matter what. Yeah, yeah. And I just feel like the goat didn't have his his flock with him this year. So no, it's like this yeah. time you're going to do it. You're going to do it. He's getting hit on every play. He really yeah. didn't have any receiver. He, the yeah. receivers he had to throw to, he didn't have a chance to get it to him. Yeah. Running back, it wasn't there. Yeah. So you knew he was going to throw. So the defense never set up for the run. They're always they're playing back. They're blitzing on him every play. Yeah. And, and so I felt bad for Tom this year. Yeah. I really hope, and I was really happy to see Tom back off and take that contract. Did he? Did he take the contract? I think five? it starts next year though. Yeah. Well, good for him. Yeah. Oh, Dude, yeah. Go be rich. Yeah. Absolutely. South Florida. <laughs> yeah, Do you, absolutely. Bro. You fly in on Saturday. Leave on date, Sunday night. You're date good. Date Instagram moms. Yeah. 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 There you go. go. Hey, just live it, Tom. <laughs> just live. You deserve. Like it. you haven't lived a life already, but yeah. You know. I will tell you when the Super Bowl when they won the Super Bowl. I was in Tampa and it was okay. one of the best times. I mean. Yeah. I, we. We stayed an hour after the game. The COVID or the COVID Super Bowl? Yeah, in Tampa. Really? Yeah, it was. It was great. Yeah, and as I'm sniffing now, I do yeah. not have COVID. For some reason it's 80 degres in Nashville. So I know, right? It's like the palms putting, in the area. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like springtime. But uh, no, it's, uh, but you know when you see that, 
I, you know, we were talking earlier, it was like the Cowboys have a lot of moving parts that they didn't have. Yeah. You know, we got two running backs that are studs. Yeah. You got yeah. options to throw to pass to your yeah. tight end's going to grow into a superstar, too. And, yeah. And the pieces are there. It's just got to fall. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah, you, I mean, you're playing the 49ers, the best defense in the league. Sure. Sure. And, you know, you, you mm-hmm. turn the ball over and, and things happen yeah. like that. And yeah. we just didn't, like, I mean, dude, there was like what Dig should have had the. The easy interception right. and and hit him in a bad place. Oh, right yeah, in the just, hands. Yeah, I mean, yeah, got You got to hit him in the chest. <laughs> the thing is, hand. you cannot have one turnover or one bad sequence of plays against somebody like the Forty Nine. No, no, no. And Brock Purdy was man. just he's just consistent and he, he was not turning stud. the ball over. Yeah. And then, yeah. really, I think the 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 play that I just remember on the I'm up on the bench is watching the jumbotron and when Kittle caught yeah. that deep. I'm like, oh, uh, it's a dagger because that was like third and long yeah. and it was, you know, like a 30 yard completion and, you know, digs right there, just like knocked the ball out. And it just, it, was, mean, a, it just, it was, it, it was, was crazy. The the chips were stacked against. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was at the interception where he hit it, it bounced off and the guy caught it. Well, there, there was that one too, but the one, uh, the, it was third and long and, and Purdy hit, uh, Kittle right down the middle for like yes. three. But yes, that was like yes, the, yes, yes. That gave that offense a little momentum. And uh, the, the game was it, tight, but it was off a penalty too, wasn't it? Was it not? I think it was either and a holding penalty back to like third and twenty three or something. It was, yeah, it was yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember. No. It was just a drive that we're like we're we're yeah. we're went we're yeah. we had him, and then Kittle makes a play, and the momentum you can just yeah. feel it. Yeah, and it's just Kittle's like, a stud. Though. Yeah, yeah, he he's is. My dude. And he lives out here, so yeah. we gotta give him a little love. Yeah, he right? is, but he's a superstar. He's a game changer. That's yeah, why he no, gets he paid. Is. What he gets paid. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, we, you know, we talked a little bit about Dak, talked a little bit about Zeke and and TP and all that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you what, man, I know, I know, people are really, really harsh on Dak, but man, this is my first time being around him in person, and I've always had the respect of him as a peer. But being in the same locker room uh, as Dak, and that dude is the epitome of leader, a winner, yeah, and a dog, and mm-hmm. a winner, and a guy who cares. I mean, yeah. There was there was tears shed in that locker room after the Niners wow. lost. So like it it means a lot he to it. a lot of people and especially him. Yeah. And uh, I know there's a lot of pressure on him every single week, every single year. The, the expectation as a Dallas Cowboy is extremely high. Sure. So this is the first place that I've been. Like we talk about this pretty often. Like when you come in day one in the off season, the ultimate goal is to win the Super Bowl, hoist the Lombardi in February, mm-hmm. right? Yep. But really, realistically, there's maybe ten teams that really have a shot at, a it. Shot at yeah. it, right? But Dallas is always in oh, that top ten. Always in it. It doesn't matter. And I hear these people saying it's like, you know, America's team, they're happy to be in the playoffs. And that's not the case at all. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's like when we go in, I, I was saying earlier, I have tickets for every Super Bowl. Yeah. And I hold them until you're like, oh, let's oh, hold on. Yeah. Cowboys aren't in, and I sell them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But yeah, what was the Super Bowl in Houston a few years back? We were almost there, man. The one, the New England one. Yep, yep. And oh uh, man, that was the, I think that was the best chance we had to win in the Super Bowl for a long time. Yeah, well, until I, this year, I think I think the team is is close, and so moving forward, you know, coming into 2023, like. You know, I hope I hope to go back, but just what I've seen as as a, a player on that roster last year, I really do think that that team is headed in the right direction with yeah, with so. Dak as the leader. I really do. Defense was finally playing great. Yeah, and he had, you know, there for a couple of years we had one option on a wide receiver. Yeah, so they just double teamed and yeah, we and tight end game was there, but it wasn't the regular Dallas Cowboy offense. Yeah, so I yeah. felt like it was, it was there. We just we just met a roadblock called the 49ers. Yeah, I, I mean, say we the Cowboys did. You know. I really think we could have beat Philly on the road, though, if we, if we made that. The Eagles. My two favorite teams are the Cowboys <laughs> and whoever's playing the Eagles. You know Jimmy Allen at all? I do. We just don't talk. When... <laughs> I mean, do you, do you know who Mike Trout is? Yeah. He's a diehard. God damn. Yeah. God will forgive him. So, so uh, yeah. <laughs> they also like In-N-Out Burger probably over Whataburger. <laughs> hey, I'm from California, so I like In-N-Out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hey, but it's funny because Jimmy, he sang, he performed. It was the... Uh, it was my second game with the Cowboys. It was Sunday night football on the road. Cooper Rush was quarterback, yeah. and and Jimmy played the halftime show. Yeah, and Jimmy and I are buddies. I'm like, oh great my gosh, of course he's here during this game. Yeah, he's a great, great dude. Yeah. But I had to go talk a little something, something on, when he was to. walking out, yeah. man. Yeah. And of course, they won the game, so I couldn't say much. But we got him yeah. again on Christmas Eve. So I feel like the Giants and the Eagles. No matter how good the Cowboys are or how bad they are, or vice versa, they always beat the brakes off of the Dallas. Yeah. Just it's just like Cubs Cardinals. Yeah, well it's it's a it's a very even playing field division. Yeah, yeah. Every year, like it's where the know, dogs are at. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's a it's a tough division. It's the SEC of the NFL. I like to keep it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like to like to uh, say that it's that way because it is. It's like every game is matters. Yeah. And obviously, you see the Giants had a great year and 
Dallas, and I mean every every team could have made it made the playoffs had, and the, had the a shot to compete in the playoffs. The Commanders are right there. Commanders, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, still call them the Redskins, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. But anyway, I we don't need to talk a lot about football, so I want to talk about you, man. Yes. And uh, so you're uh, born and raised in, in uh, Austin, Texas. Born in Dallas or but Dallas, most of my life but Austin. most most yeah. of Austin. When yeah. did you make your transition here to Nashville? So 2015 or 2016. I always had dual residencies here in Austin. Okay. Um, and my wife was like, "Hey, let's just." You know, we decided to put a life together, and she loves Nashville. So, and she's from uh, she's from Clearwater, Florida. Okay, so that's it. We just came up here. We bought a house in Franklin, and yeah, kind of been there. So bought at the right time. About at the right time. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> then we moved over in, into the College Grove area. That's awesome, man. That's cool. So, uh, how did how did like music come about? How did DJing come about? Yeah. I just started like any other DJ, just playing frat parties, picking up chicks. You know yeah, what I mean? And, yeah. And I went to school to be a teacher and a football baseball coach. Really. And I found out what I was going to make as a teacher, and I just yeah. never went through with it. And That's crazy. Yeah. So, so baseball is like your passion? Like I played the, baseball in college. Did you really? Uh-huh. That's cool. Junior college and four-year school. Yeah. And uh, thank God that's how I paid for school. Yeah. And then they told me I was going to make up to $28,000 a year to teach high school. I was like, oh, my God. So you went to college for education, huh? Yeah, I just didn't know anybody. I mean, that's a lot of pressure on an 18-year-old no, kid. No, for sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Say, what do you want to do the rest of your life? I was like... Dude, I don't know what I'm doing Saturday night. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it seemed like uh, I wanted to be a coach. Who doesn't? You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was the way to do that, and and it just, uh, I mean, I wasn't there. People that teach school, I, I applaud them because you got to love it. Yeah, 100%. I did. Love it. You got to have patience. I don't have patience. Yeah, you got to have. Yeah, you got to want to get up in the morning. Yeah, I can't get up it's, in the mornings. Kill me. I mean, coaching's the same way. Yeah, man. I mean, I it's go a different I, breed. every now and then. Like I, I, I really think like coaching is my blood. My my mm-hmm. grandfather was a head football coach for most of his life and uh i mean i was bred into a football yeah. family and so i love going to help out but when i go out to like a little pop warner practice yeah you're in and it. you got little eight-year-old minions running around yeah okay. i'm like my yeah. i'm like third give me 30 minutes is i can give you all my energy 30 minutes yeah and i can try to keep your attention span like nice and tight and you're attentive for it but working with that age group is like tough you can't install plays. Like, let's just do, yeah. let's run right, run left, pass right, pass left, and then, yeah. you know, just let the athletes kind of make the plays. you look at football, it's always something moving. If yeah. you're not paying attention, you're about to get leveled. You know, yeah. there's always your eyes are on. Yeah. You know, my kids, when he was five, yeah. he played baseball. Yeah. And it's just so boring. Trying yeah. to keep a kid's attention for two hours, oh, and yeah. he was going to get hit once, maybe. Yeah. And sit in the field and never get a ball hit at him. Yeah. And I, and I was like, dude, I'll get you a cake pop from Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, Dad, can I have that cake pop now? Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's like, put them on the soccer field. At least they're running dude, for 60 something. minutes this straight. Is, we got to figure out a way, especially like baseball for the youth, to make faster, quicker, yeah. more of a turnover, more interactive with kids. Yeah. Because I'm just looking, you know, when I figure we're pretty close to the same age. Like, yeah. We grew up, it was football, baseball, basketball. Yeah. Constantly outside. Yeah. These kids yeah. don't have to do that. I mean, yeah. they got iPads, they got inside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and I, you know, I, my parents are like, you have to come in. I'm yeah. like, wait, dude, you got to go outside. Yeah. And, but the, on the flip side of that, there is, it's, it's pretty incredible to see with the YouTubes and, and the videos that kids can now look at. Yeah. And it's almost like they self teach themselves based off of what they're so. watching on, on yeah. TV. And so they go outside. Like, it's like back in the day, like we'd see a highlight. On ESPN, we go try to emulate that right. in, the, in the in the backyard, like yeah. Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, I remember just throwing yeah. a ball up and running to the fence, and like I'm, I'm snagging a home run ball, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. we didn't see those plays. We don't we don't have a phone, and you go search that. I feel like kids now can go look yeah. at that stuff, learn how to hit, learn how to run. I mean, the swag that these kids That's have in, in world flag football. Hands. Oh yeah. And they're eight years old doing That's these right. jukes moves and like yeah. jump cuts. I'm like, what the, the buttons? Heck? Yeah, yeah, it's right. crazy, man. I tried to explain to my kid yesterday that I was older than Google. It just, you know, <laughs> you think about it, he's like, yeah, yeah. get out of here, dad. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, well, yeah, it's true. And the internet. Yeah. It's, it's wild, man. Yeah. So you're in the thick of it with uh, parenting, huh? I uh, mean, I love it. Yeah. I, I got a six year old son and a three year old daughter. That's awesome. We just had our second daughter four days ago. Well, I will tell you. And so you got three? No, two. Two, well, two girls. The first one was such an angel. Yeah. But if we would have had the daughter first, we'd have never had the, the boy. Really? She's a demon. <laughs> she is evil. And she's you just love her so much, you know. It's like Does she run the house? Oh, no, without a doubt. Yeah. She told me today, it's like, we gotta go outside and take pictures. So oh. I was like, Let's go, girl. You know? It's just my girl. I get up, you know, that's my she people. Sets, she sets your schedule. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Especially and when, when you're home. Yeah, and, and, and no matter what you're doing and yeah. Whatever she wants at that part, that's yeah. what's happening. No, it's funny, man. Well, yeah. my my daughter's too, and she's like turning into like she's got the personality, she's got the yeah. diva, the sass. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. She's my little baby girl, that's and it. then we got, you know, the, the newborn, and she's starting to like understand like that 
that's baby and yeah. she's she's like trying to feed her bottle when she's sleeping and doing all this it's, it's very very cute but yeah we i feel like i got my hands full i will say something about the second one is the second one is always trying to compete with the first one really because they're older and they're trying to they see them do and they want to do what they're bigger. so they they kind of grew up faster then huh? yeah no, but, it's, so? uh, but it's a lot more irritation i can hear yeah, you know, yeah, yeah screaming yeah. and yeah wake never cried or screamed and yeah. davis is a drop of a hat man yeah well I, i'm just glad that they have their sisters yeah you know i really wanted a boy my wife and i were pretty convinced they were having a boy and as soon as that that baby came out. I was looking for a little wee wee. I didn't no. see one. I said, "We got another girl. Let's go." Yeah. We didn't know what we were having. Yeah, we the doctor didn't do... handed me the. You know, yeah. Oh goddamn! What is this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's a girl. I was like, Yeah. You know what? Yeah. yeah, we didn't do any gender yeah. reveal. Nothing. We just kept yeah. it a surprise too. I felt the just... person we did. I felt did like you? it was a dude. I was like, first of all, I can't keep this a secret. Second of all, I feel yeah. like if I'm gonna have a daughter, I need to know this. You need to know. Prepare then the yourself. second one, uh, my wife had a miscarriage, and and it, it was just such a miracle of life. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like. Let's just see what happens, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It is, it is a blessing for sure, but a lot of estrogen in my house right now. A lot. A lot. <laughs> I feel got, it. And then we got a, my wife, obviously, and a female dog. I mean, dude, that's... Oh, that's your fault. I'm just, like, <laughs> immersed in estrogen, man. It's, yeah. But it's great. I love being a girl dad. Yeah. Uh, it's There's the best, nothing man. better than when they when they want to cuddle. They're like... Yeah. I always say, like, women are like cats, man. You got to let them come to you. Yeah. If you're trying to pet on that cat when she ain't ready, she's going to bite your head off. But, uh, you know, it's... it's yeah. Davis will... That can we snuggle? And I'll, I'll be late to a meeting if yeah. she wants to snuggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because I know those days are few and far between. I know, man. You got to cherish yeah. the moments for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. So as 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 music your music career grows, you're into DJing now. How did, when did you like really? Did you come here to Nashville specifically to kind of just yeah. immerse yourself more into music? Or well, I just feel like if you're, you you can't win the lottery if you don't play it. Sure, Nashville's the lottery, and everything's out of Nashville. We tour out of Nashville. Yeah, naturally centrally located to everything. It's yeah. easy in and out. Cost of living is not yeah. compared to everything else. Yeah. And it's getting there. But yeah. it's uh, it's just an easy way of life. And everyone we know in the business and all our friends and, like I said, bus calls here. The, yeah, yeah. It's just, just Nashville's the spot you got to be. Yeah, so, like, as a DJ, and I don't know much about DJing, but, like, could you have gone to L.A. or uh, Vegas yeah. or... If my wife would have let us move to Las Vegas or Miami or... Yeah. It, my life would be a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Six, a lot of six AM flights. But that's but that scene is a lot bigger, right? Then yeah, no, I don't really even play in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, but you know, when I was in Austin, I played. I, I made a great living and never left Texas. Yeah. But I wanted more than what Texas. Sure, had sure. And then uh, you know, and I've been blessed enough. I've been playing Vegas for over ten years. Yeah. Atlantic City, Boston. Yeah. Um, like uh, Scottsdale, Phoenix, sure. San Diego, Dallas. Yeah. So by coming to Nashville, what were, what were the opportunities that were not presenting themselves that you wouldn't have in Texas? Other than uh, just having more of a yeah. musical, well, well, yeah. At the end of the day, it's just, it's just your circle of people that you're around, yeah, and yeah. The production and the group, and, yeah, and the creativity. But it's you know, as long as you got an airport close, I can work from anywhere. Yeah. So I, I read up on a bio. Bio. I mean, obviously, Wikipedia, everything's real and true. <laughs> um, but you were the first yeah. DJ to sign on a major record in label Nashville. here in Nashville. Uh-huh. Yeah, I signed to Sony in 2012. 2012. So how did, like how did that happen though? Like, well, I didn't know any different. And, yeah. And you know, we we went around and. Kind of met with this label, this label, this what stuff I was doing was kind of getting out to people. Yeah, and uh, and we met with Sony, and I, I told my manager, I said, "This is where I want to be." And yeah. Like, well, you don't have a deal from Sony. I was like, "Well, do your job, man." Yeah, yeah. And so that's how it's, that's how it happened. So how did you differentiate yourself as like being someone that they could sign as opposed to whoever I, else is out there? You know, things I didn't know the difference. I was just me. Yeah. And I yeah. was, and I didn't think it was weird to mix country music because that's how what I, you know, like. So you started doing that well before. Long time. Ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was always I was always known as the guy like I could be playing, the biggest club in Chicago, but I'm gonna mix country music. Okay. Okay. Island, All right. Or Vegas. Okay. And, and I kind of and, and I was I'm not saying I started the whole country mashup thing or whatever, but, but I was probably pretty close. Pioneered it a little you bit, know, yeah. If, and, uh, and I'm saying I'm not saying I started that by any means, but I was definitely on the ground level of it. And yeah. And you hear you see people now like putting up TikToks and yeah, my mixes. You know, yeah, what? I'm like, yeah. good for you, bro. Yeah. yeah. So that's what kind of drew you to Nashville because of the country scene. Well, they it was kind of a you need to move to Nashville kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Managers are, and I was like, all right, you know. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it was like. Austin is a single man's town, and yeah. I was very single. Yeah. Now that you know, we're, you know, I was engaged, about to get married, and yeah. Nashville was. I mean, I remember I had a condo in Austin. Yeah. Nine hundred square feet. It was like, I don't know, seven hundred fifty, eight hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Go to Nashville. I got a three bedroom, two bath. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Rents like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a yeah. month. And I'm like, dude, these people don't even know. You yeah, know? yeah I, I know. Felt like I won the lottery. I know, right? And that's not so much like that anymore. But, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it just it was it was just it was a slow but easy transition. Yeah, and so my first time 
hearing who you were was at an Aldine show. Yep. So you come out, you know, between yep. sets and, and play music, get the crowd kind of hyped. And yeah. how did that connection start with Jason Aldean? Yeah, so I was playing in Las Vegas at a Taboo Night, Taboo Ultra Lounge in, in the MGM. Okay. And uh, I guess Jason was in town for an award show. I sure. wasn't there for that. It was just my rotation. And he came in and was playing. And, and uh, our agent at the time, and now, Kevin Neal, okay. it was his agent. He goes, I got this guy named Jason Aldean. And uh, I made this mix because I was touring with Nelly. I was yeah. doing all the after parties Really? That's Nelly. great. Okay. So I wasn't on like stage with Nelly. I was doing the after parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mixed co- She's Country with Country Grammar by Nelly. Okay, yeah. And that was kind of, little did I know, like Brooks and Dunn had it in their walk-in. It, just, yeah. it was just something that just I made and kind of put up a sound. It's kind of a little it. viral, viral yeah, mashup, kind of, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then just well, kind of went from there and and then uh, Kevin was like, you want to go on tour with Jason? I was like, sure, man. He goes, well, don't don't mess, don't call me. I'll call you. And yeah. two weeks later, I got my 2010 tour schedule. Really? So, yeah. That's why. 2010. 10, so 12, 13 years now. My first time seeing Jason perform was in Omaha, Nebraska yeah. at uh, TD Ameritrade Field, sure. the, the College, college World Series. Yeah. So you were, you must have been, yeah, you had to have been. Yeah. That was one of the best days of my life because I'm yeah. a college baseball fan. Yeah. You know? I was walking around doing all the things, playing the PlayStation the house. That's and, crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, because I was living in Omaha at the time, so I was playing for the UFL Omaha Nighthawks at the time, and uh, we yeah. played in that stadium. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we were in the old uh, the old stadium. Gosh, I forget the name of it, but it was uh, it, this is the first year that it was open. They had a big concert, and yeah. Aldine was headlining that. And now we play Omaha at some – it's an indoor venue now. I don't know the name. Down, the downtown arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean – it's pretty crazy, man, to see like how yep. big he's gotten. Just proud of that guy. Man. Oh, it's really, really cool, right? Yeah. And so you've pretty much been on tour with him ever since, huh? I, I, you know, I've toured with other people like yeah. off tour season. I left one year and came back, but, but yeah, this is just my guy. Man. So how incredible has it been for you and your career uh, personally, like to be on a stage like that in between sets, obviously playing your music in front of thousands, and thousands of people, new people yeah. every yeah, weekend, every like. Night. Yeah. Just, I mean, the exposure was incredible, huh? And it's still, like, it never gets old. It's yeah. The minute the spotlight hits you. And, you know, and, the, and the thing is, I, you know, everybody's got a role in this world. My yeah. role is just to get this crowd warmed up for Jason. Yeah, and, and, it, and it helps. I'm just, I'm proud to do it, man. Yeah, it's cool because when you go to an Aldine show, um, it's almost like, you know, in between sets, you know, you go to the bar and you hang out and you don't come back in until you hear the lights go down or something. Right. But as soon as that artist before Jason goes on, you're out there. Minute, rocking, you, minute and a half later, we're up, we're hitting. And how long are you up there typically? So I play nine to nine thirty, nine to nine twenty nine, and Jason's oh, so nine thirty. Yeah, so you have a significant amount minutes, of time up yeah, there, so. and you're getting the place hype, and people are coming in. I'm yep. sure people are dancing and getting all that stuff. I mean, my, then, my entire goal is to get the people to just all their energy they have, just get it out. When Jason hits the stage, it's just fire. Yeah, because in my opinion, I took uh, my wife last summer. Uh, our favorite venue is in Noblesville, Indiana. Sure. Clips. Uh, at Clips, yeah. um, and uh, we saw, we saw. I think you were not on that that date because I remember reaching I, out to. I you. was at a festival. Yeah, you're at a festival, mm-hmm. and uh, he's still probably my number one. He's the best. Welcome anytime, man. He's, he's dude. He's he, incredible. He's a homie too. He's, he's, yeah, yeah. He's a guy you like. You leave, you're like, that's my dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's he just the energy the entire show. Yeah, and not many people can do that. And it's banger after banger after banger. You think about it's it. Just, he's a, it's a ninety minute set. He's taken. Five number ones out of his rec- out just to fit in the show. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's wild, man. And, and I always say this: there's enough meat on Aldine's records that he hasn't released. Yeah, that's another man's career. Oh, that he just that'll never hear the light of day because you can't get them all in. That's so cool, man. So and every year his music gets better. Yeah, it really does, man. It's awesome, and he's done some collabs with like some yeah. some artists that are non traditional to country. Yeah, like right? Luda and Dirt Road Anthem. Was yeah, just great. It was pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah so. Are you on the road? So you could, we talked about off-season. I'm in off-season mode right now. Are you kind of in the off-season mode right now? January, February is kind of slow season for me. I, I usually start Super Bowl and down. Yeah. And uh, just I don't do cold weather very well. I, yeah. I just know that sounds pretty petty of me, but I just, yeah. dude, I'm, I'm not it. Man. I ain't yeah. your guy if you want to meet me in Chicago. Are you a Texas boy? And... I can't handle it. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time in Florida. Yeah. And uh, in spring break, I, I started in March. I think I have four days home. Wow. In April, we start t- festival season with Tortuga. Yeah. Um, you know, then I hold residencies in Boston, uh, Atlantic City, Las okay. Vegas. Yeah. So we're constantly moving. Yeah. Now, fi- family dynamic for touring, how does that, do they come quite no, often? No. No? Hardly ever. It's, um, like, no, no. If we're in Noblesville, Indiana, she's busy. But if we're in Cabo San Lucas, my wife's oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She off work. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, it is, it'd be honest, it's just, it's, they've seen it. They've been there. It's yeah. Like, it's almost they're always woke with me. Yeah, it's almost easier sometimes if they don't. Yeah, yeah. I know I I got a job to do, and a lot sure. of people look at us like, oh, you just party, but it's like at the end of the day, that's when I work. 
Yeah, no, it's and it's true for us too. Like uh, some of the more stressful weeks of the season are the big games, like on Christmas Eve, yeah. family coming in. You yeah. know, when the Colts came in, like a ton of my family and my wife's so family many came in. Yeah. and it's yeah. not not to say it's a distraction, but it can be, and yeah, it is yeah. for a lot of because you because your mind's other you know, like when. Like when you're when you're playing and you, you don't have anyone and it's you and that football gets the quarterback. Oh yeah, but it's yeah. like home, just like your grandma being in Oakland. Like, yeah, dude, nanny's in section B three one. I yeah. hope she's still there when I, the game's over. Well, not only that, it's like all right, these tickets got to get to will call. Now yeah. it's like everything's yeah. on your phone, so it's like I hope they have service Wi Fi yeah. so they can get the tickets through Ticketmaster or, or StubHub or whatever. And or God forbid they get there, the tickets aren't at will call. And exactly, you get your handler to handle it. And, yeah, and it just it's just stress on top of stress. Yeah, and, yeah, and everybody's got the same goal to get it done, but it's just like yeah. There's you know there's times where it's just like just like pre pre show we do, nobody's backstage we got to get right in our head you know well and also too it's like I love having my family at a game I, I mean my wife and my daughter has have been to almost every game since my youngest yeah. is, or my oldest has been alive and uh, I love having her there does she you know? know what you do yet kind of sort of like yeah. she knows what football is and this year yeah. in particular she did and she come down the stands and wave and I, that that stuff that I'll melts that's my it. heart that's it. Um, but you know when you have a ton of people friends family coming in. You know, you're you're obviously you, after the game you got to go meet them, and sometimes you just drain. Like the last thing you want to yeah. do is like socialize, say hi to everybody. Or you just might have lost, or, or exactly or you some bad plays. And it's yes, like, yes, 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 yes. You got to have you, a short memory in football, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can imagine <laughs> yeah. like touring's like the yeah. same. Like yeah. when you're done, sometimes maybe you just want to go back to the bus and chill. Just sit down for a second. Just yeah, relax. yeah. And yeah. I, I tell everybody the only thirty minutes of my life that I control yeah. is when I'm playing music. Yeah. And after that, I am not acting like I'm in charge of anything. Yeah. My wife's like, do you take the trash out? Yeah. Or you know, my kids got dance or you know what i'm, I'm that yeah. dude taking my kid to ballet ballet yeah. ballerina i don't even know what it's called ballerina class yeah ballet class yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, it's uh yeah so everybody's got to roll on my wife's the boss there you go yeah <laughs> but that 30 minutes is yeah it's just i yeah. don't hear anything but me so when you go out and you have a show on say friday saturday are you like on the road thursday night come back saturday night or sunday or so we usually leave like wednesday at midnight okay depending on how far the travel is yeah 10 or 11 12 then the show's thursday friday saturday sometimes yeah. sunday then just home sunday yeah do you have your own bus no you just hop on with the crew no, and just ride with Jason. Mostly. That's what's up, man. Yeah, that's that's it. awesome. I figured this world out. I don't even get bring a tour manager out. It's just Dude, me. it's like I went on. Uh, I'm really good friends with Chase Rice. Love Chase. He's a neighbor. Okay, yeah. so I know. We, yeah, a so mile and a half. Yeah, that's very very close. Um, and uh, I went on like a three, three city. We can run. We can run. Uh-huh. And. Uh, I, dude, I slept incredible on those bumps. Those buses. Yeah, cause, you know why? Because you can't control anything. Yeah. Nobody's expecting you to get up. Yeah. It's pitch black. It's pitch cold. black. The, the humming of the wheels on the uh, on the, on the asphalt. Just yeah, it's different, man. Yeah. I tell you, it's, I, you know, it's like we'll yeah. go out and every morning I'm up at 8 o'clock, usually before the alarm. Yeah. But on the bus, I was just like, dude, it's 1130. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so what are your what are your uh, favorite venues? I love the wharf in Orange Beach, Alabama. Okay. Just for the setting, the ambience on the ocean. Yeah. Uh, Anything in Florida is always great. Yeah. Um, uh, Fenway Park was always awesome. That's pretty cool, huh? Wrigley was great. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, but then again, there's something about you. You're addicted to that spotlight of nightclubs, too. So yeah, I yeah. Play Zoo Las Vegas full time. Okay, and, yeah. And, uh, you know, just, yeah. Uh, so there's, uh, to, to say a favorite venue is there's a lot of favorite venues. Yeah. Now, there's venues I don't ever want to go back to, you yeah, know, yeah, but, yeah. but there's a um, blessed enough in my life to a part of my life where it's like, I can say, I, let's you know, I'll call my agent. Let's concentrate in Vegas, Miami, Tampa, yeah. and let's live in these. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, shoot, maybe five years ago, Jason was playing in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah, Kane Brown was on tour. That's my dude. Yeah, <clears throat> we drove down from Indy, me and my buddy, to the show. We know Kane. I know Kane's uh, management group. Mm-hmm. So we went there, and afterwards, we went to like. Uh, little like western honky tonk bar out there yeah called like cow pokes or cow po- <laughs> anyway know, yeah. but you but you got up there and was, you were playing oh was i playing oh, nice. yeah 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 nice, yeah nice. and it was like people were starting to line dance a little bit and mingle yeah. around and whatnot but i thought it was kind of cool like all yeah. of kane's band and everybody went there afterwards. i do know it's a little like wooden yeah like, yeah had a table like everything's left. wooden in there yeah yeah, 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 yeah. but you were up there yeah. playing some music i was yeah, like what's absolutely. up man the, uh, that no, might have been the very first time we initially met but no absolutely it's uh Kane can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, no one was bothering him. I mean, there were people. Was, yeah. People would, you know, obviously recognize him and come yeah. up and say hi. But I mean, it wasn't like there was no yeah. security. No, there were people that are made to be superstars. Man, he's one of them. Yeah, he's awesome. Good he's dude. as good inside as he is. Yeah, yeah. So it, he's uh, 
He went on tour with Jason. Yeah. Jason kind of took him under his wing a little bit, you think? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. they're very close. That's cool. It seems like just with Instagram you see them together we're quite all, a bit. And obviously you're you spend your family spends a lot of time with them too. We're always all the birthdays, holidays, we're always That's together. cool, man. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um shoot, growing up, like what would I mean, who was your inspiration to get into DJing? Uh you know what? I, I didn't really have it like a DJ inspiration, so to me, so to speak. It was like a, I just rem- I just remember being in like working a front door of a nightclub or walking in and just seeing that dude control the room. Yeah, and whatever it was, the yeah. music just grabbed me. Yeah, and it wasn't about so much as the like the girls and the drinks. It was just like I was so like taken over by the DJ life, the culture. Yeah, yeah. and I was I wanted to, I wanted to learn this. Yeah, and it's uh. So what did it take? How did you even start? Just, just got some cheap mix match gear and yeah. I had a, a DJ friend of mine so showed me a couple yeah. just enough to get me started. Yeah. And literally to this day I'll do something every day with music. That's cool. And I would spend hours and hours just locked in my Did you start with like house music, hip hop or just, Um I've always just loved house music but Yeah. It, but I learned to mix on like hip hop and yeah. rock and country and yeah. and it's just it's it's learning key changes like learning chord progressions. Now yeah. it's l- learning mixing in key. It's learning, you know, it's just how to, and I, I think a gift that I was given, and I'm not, I don't, I don't mean that the way it's, it comes out, but it's like I have the ability to to read a room. Yeah. I have the ability to find, you know, persuasion with people. Yeah. And I, I believe that that's 90% of DJing is knowing how to read a room. Or, and you can change the mood, right? Immediately. By the, immediately. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool, yeah. man. But also kind of a lot of pressure too, right? So if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if you, the thing is. Because you, if you, you make, don't want to be that guy at the party that screwed takes the ox cord and That's he's right. the one that <laughs> kills That's the right. vibe, right? You know, this thing is if you can make 80% of anything happy. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the thing is, in music is is something where it like pulls out a memory and a positive sure. emotion or yeah. something. That's all you're trying to play off of. So when you. Let me ask you this, though, too, as a DJ, and when you have that control of a room, a party, an mm-hmm. event, how do you how do you approach it when you're working with di- different demographics, too? Yeah. Well, I feel like every show you walk into, and I prejudged one show before, and I said I was playing at Akasan in Las Vegas. Yeah. And I set my set list up, and I left that room just like, dude, I left so much meat on the bone, and I okay. don't feel like I did what I could have did. And I... So I, I just walk into the room and I kind of let the crowd tell me what they want to go. So you you do a little like homework before you walk into yeah, certain Yeah, I know like we and... go into Philly. I know what to play. We go into yeah. Atlantic City. I know I got to yeah. play Bon Jovi. We go into Texas. I know we yeah. mix in some George Strait. Yeah. We, we go to L.A. I mean, it's wide open there. But yeah, it's yeah. like a, but yeah, I you you have to know, like if you go play in Oakland, you, you know, you're from the Bay Area. Yeah. If you don't play Bay Area music, yeah. I'm not talking like E-40 and Too Short. We're yeah. talking the underground stuff you never heard of. Yeah. You insult those people. Yeah. So you just yeah. got, you've got to kind of do your due diligence hey. It's a little kick to sneak in there. That's it. And yeah, I mean, uh, I mean yeah, That's you got to, yeah, E42 short is all the time, but then as soon as you throw yeah. some kick to sneak in. Just showing and that like, you respect that city enough to. Yeah, to, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, yeah. that's cool, man. I, I, I'm i learning a lot as I'm talking to you because I'm, I, I don't know much about it. And I think it's really cool because you kind of have this special niche right here in Nashville in the music scene and, yeah. and working with country artists. It's and, such an honor. Yeah. Like yeah. Jimmy Allen, we have record together. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And, and what do you, what is your influence on that? Well, you know, I, I put together this group called Roadhouse. Okay, and I was it was basically I, I, kind of like the chain smoker Swedish house mafia format, yeah. just with to do but to collab with country artists. So Swedish house, it was my first that's like. A, that's a big would you call it a rave? I don't know what you would call it. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it was back I, then. It was probably a rave. Now it was it's there. Just it was, yeah, yeah. So Swedish house mafia was my very first and last. Like really, yeah. I mean, what do you call them? A house. Yeah, it's a house DJ duo. It's kind of yeah, just basically. But it was our last house. tour. Yeah. It was like 2014 ish, and uh, we saw them at the Madison Square Garden. We played the night after. Really, that's yeah. awesome. But I saw them in uh, Coach, Frisco. Yeah, and <laughs> dude, first off, we got off Bart and we're walking to the venue. We're like, my my buddy kind of told me we need to go to this because it's the last tour. We got to see him. Right. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So kind of on a whim, go there. We have no tickets. Mm. We, the first person, first scalper we see getting on BART train, walking to the <laughs> venue, he sells us tickets. They're fake. Of course they are. So I get to the, get in line. Mm-hmm. We got fake tickets. So the cop, we're like, what the? We're pissed. Yeah. So we're, we asked the cop, you like, just dropped a grip. What, 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 what scalper out here is legit? They said any scalper that is in with like our, our visual, they're all selling legitimate tickets. I got you. All the yeah. fraudulent stuff is going to be in a in back the, alleyway. In the parking so, lot yeah, back there. Yeah. yeah. So these guys are all legit. They've been doing it for years. So of course we go to oh there's Fred all right Fred give us some tickets obviously we pay twice as much what yeah. we paid earlier what they're really worth <laughs> yeah 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 but we get in and dude like I mean I've saw I've seen I saw things that I never saw before yeah. and it was just an incredible energy 
Yeah. And dude, I had my shirt off within an hour. Oh, like, you're I'm feeling just it. like, you're feeling it. You you're know, the P- I'm a PD Pablo, like, yeah. North Carolina. Like, yeah. I was in there and I had glasses yeah. on. And you're the spirit. But it was, yeah. it was legit. And what I will tell you about yeah. playing like events like that is like, nobody to your left or right gives a damn what you're doing. No, not at all. It's just like, like, you know, you like, just like playing in LA. When yeah. You play in LA. Everybody's worried about what dude on the left is thinking or the guy on the yeah. right or the ugly chick in front. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you go to these clubs, like, even like Zook or, or any EDCs, these people just are there, free spirit, yeah. on God knows what drugs, but yeah, they're yeah, just yeah, having yeah. the time of their life. They yeah. just want you to have a good time, too. Yeah, at the time, I think, like, the gloves with the lights and the fingertips were the big thing. Yeah. And, uh, like, I'm a, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a bigger guy, like, you know, compared to most people in those shows. Yeah. And I was, like, bumping people with no one, like... Nobody. They didn't care. They're just like, my enjoy. bad, my bad. Sorry. Let's have... Yeah, like... Sorry, man. Here's a drink, you yeah. know, like... Don't it was drink just... the drinks from strangers <laughs> wearing cat suits, bro. That's the only rule I got. Or suck it on a pacifier. Uh-huh. You don't want yeah. that one either. <laughs> You're not trying to inhale what's on that pacifier. <laughs> Does those, yeah, Swedish House is awesome, yeah. man. And, uh, yeah, it's just... It's just a it's a different environment. Yeah. It's a different world, you know. And it's just uh, love. That's all they're pushing yeah. is love. But it's cool yeah. to see you collaborate with you know guys that I know and yeah. and um, you're really just immersing yourself in the country scene. So like, where, I mean, how does it progress? Well, just you just or yeah. what or what or what, what I should ask you is like, what barriers are you seeing as you know? Yeah. That's what I, that's how I was going to answer. Yeah, it's, it's it's basically opening doors and elongating their fan base. Yeah, opening doors when at when I play these big house venues or festivals. Who is Jimmy Allen? I have a song with Jimmy, so it comes yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah. they open the door to Jimmy, so they fall in the rabbit hole, hopefully, of Jimmy Allen's music. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So that's and the key to this world is I feel bad for anyone that listens to one form of yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like on your iPhone, you probably have every genre in the world. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it just these people are always looking for new music. Yeah, they just have to be introduced to it. Yeah, and you play a record like you know, uh, talk with our hands with me and Jimmy. People are like, yeah, shit, I've never heard of Jimmy Allen. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's dig into Jimmy. Then next thing you know, you're digging into. Hardy. The next thing you know, you're yeah. digging into you know, whoever. Yeah. But signing on, signing on with uh, Sony and kind of being the first to ever yeah. do it. I mean, was there any backlash within that? Uh, yeah, that no. <laughs> it, within Sony, like <laughs> maybe who did we just sign or? Uh, well, you know, if they did, they. Um, I would never know that. Yeah. Know, but but the Twitter trolls are rolling. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, but and, but I get it. It's like people that listen to just traditional country music and nothing else, I feel so bad for you. Yeah. And, and that's, and I, I, so if you want to listen to traditional country, your dog's running away, your, yeah. your sister's, your wife, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't your dude. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to go have a party and not, you know, drink some drinks and meet new people, come with me. Yeah. 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 That's cool. And so that's the vibe you put out, man. That's it. Yeah. All fun, all the time. Yeah. So man, what's what's in store for uh, this year? Uh, we got a new single coming out with Roadhouse called Only One. It comes out March 3rd. We're actually okay. doing the release in Vegas. Uh, uh, over 200 t- cities tours from March to December. Yeah. Uh, leave with Aldine in July, come back in October. We got uh, Tortuga Music Festival, Faster Horses, Rock the South, Carolina Country Music Festival. We got a new festival in Virginia Beach that we're doing. Really? Um, so, What's the craziest festival? Faster Horses, hands down. And where's that at? Uh, Brooklyn, Michigan, Michigan International Speedway. Really? Yeah. Watershed gets down to. Watershed's in Washington, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I need to go there. Yeah, Tidal the Wave gorge, in right? Atlanta. Yeah, yep. yeah, T- yeah. Tidal Wave in Atlantic City gets down. Yeah, so what is it about What is it about Watershed? Is it just the environment, the atmosphere, or <laughs> I don't you know looking they, down at all the people? I don't or? know if the air's thinner up there or what, but those people, they don't give a shit. Yeah. They, they, they want to, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they're singing every Thompson Square song in the world. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, two in the morning, they're singing every yeah. cascade. Song. Well, I feel like everybody from that state, yeah. like in Canada, come down like and yeah. just flock there. That is their vacation. Yeah, yeah. yeah and if you've never been to the gorge, it's you, beautiful. It's, I have never been there. I've, that's I mean, God showing off, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like the end of the world, just right there. So yeah, yeah. What about Tortuga? Is that Tortuga is unreal? In just, April. A, just a party. I can't even wait. Yeah. So it's right on the beach, Fort Fort Lauderdale Beach. Yeah. Then we'll play at eleven in Miami that night. Yeah. Or then we'll do parties in Fort Lauderdale after, and it's just yeah. It's just, I mean, how how do you get mad at palm trees, beach, and sand, yeah. and country music? Wow. I mean, and it's 40,000 deep or whatever, probably 35,000. And do you play longer sets? Or do you? I just play between the last five or six sets. Okay, yeah, okay. But, but that's, uh, so you're out there, what? I'm up there a lot. Yeah. So whatever the the, the uh, set changes. Okay. That's so, and, you, and you're... And you doing that three nights in a row? Three nights, or? Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Really, or man? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's pretty I'll cool. tell you one of my favorite festival memories ever. I was on stage in Tortuga, first year of Tortuga. And, and and a guy walked up to me and said, "Hey, Tiger just won the Masters. Okay, you, you should announce it." Yeah, 
I was like, oh, I hope this works. Because you yeah. never know, you know? And I said, uh, Tiger Woods just won the Masters, and it was just this mass eruption just really? for like 10 minutes, people throwing drinks, clapping. It was just it was such a cool thing. Well, if I, I do, dude, I was doing a sporting event in Indy simultaneously as the NFL draft was going on. Yeah. And I go out there, and I'm watching Twitter. I'm like, hey, I'm probably going to be on stage, you know, as the Colts announced their yeah. first-round pick. And obviously, I'm in Indy, so there's Colts fans in the, in the audience, obviously. And I go out there to present this award, but before I do that, I yeah. announce the first-round draft pick yeah. from Malik Hooker from Ohio State. Oh, yeah, yeah. No one clapped or said anything. Oh, wow. And I said, all right, that, that wasn't a great idea. <sighs> Woof. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on. Like no, one, I was like, "This is so weird." I thought people would it's be your first round. You should be going nuts right now. Well, and Ohio, yeah. Ohio State's so close. Maybe they saw the future. Of what happened to I Malik Cooker? I don't right? know, man. Sorry, Malik. <laughs> I played with him though. Yeah, dog. Is he? Dog. Ryan Day is one of my dear friends from Ohio State. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. He's he's a superstar. Doing really well. Yeah, he's gonna. He had a big big shoes to fill with Urban, and he's stepping in them. Well, you got to get there. He's got a long ways from it, but that's I know he's I know he's filling big shoes, but I don't know. He's yeah. not feeling. Good shoes. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, I just, well, just imagine. My boys went in Jacksonville. The stories I heard out of there, mm-hmm. not a good dude. Really, not a good person. Oh no, oh no. You didn't. I mean, the herb. You even heard the oh, herb. Urban. My yeah, oh, Urban. Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about Day. Right. No, I know, but I'm saying he obviously filling big shoes. Oh, yeah, legacy, coming, legacy football wise. Oh, but I'm no, like, no, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like he's filling the shoes of a great person no, that was there. Yeah, I don't know Urban from from Adam. I just yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking football legacy of just. I mean, yeah, yeah. winning wise. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll tell you one of the coolest things. We were at Ohio State, and uh, Urban was still the coach. Yeah, and Day was back there. Tom met him. Yeah, he was in the in the uh, hallway, and I was like, he had his family. I was like, dude, just take my dressing room. It was cool. Yeah, and uh, and he said, I got some for your son. And I was like, you want to as a father, you want to get anywhere to our hearts? That's our kids. Yeah, handed me a football set. Uh, two wake O H I O. That's cool, Ryan man. Day. So is your son the Ohio State fan? I uh, know he's six. I, I mean, but nah, I mean, th- I mean nah. is he going to be, or are uh, you are you Longhorn? What are you? I mean, I'm diehard Longhorn and and uh, you know Cowboys fan, but I also like the Cardinals. I mean, I don't know. I I, I yeah. got to the part of my life where I have friends that are NASCAR drivers. I have friends. Sure, that are, you so you root, root for, for friends, them. and yeah. yeah, yeah. But obviously, that, Cowboys is your thing. Yeah. Outside absolutely. of that, it's like I root for friends. That's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So with Longhorns, let me ask you a question real quick about uh, them because like yeah. Archie Manning's, you yeah. know, I hope he lives up to it. And then, but what about uh, Ewers, Quinn Ewers? Yeah, I don't know. What's going to happen? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, you What's know. What's the vibe from the, the Austin, like, community down there that is, is, uh, is Manny going to be the guy, like, right off the bat, or is he going to have to earn it? I mean, he's going to have to grow up. Sure. You know, I, 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 here's the thing. You can put him out there. He's got to be able to take getting literally, excuse my friends, the shit kicked out of him for a year because it's yeah. going to happen. You think about it, Texas going to the SEC. Yeah. And and I'm in like I'm in group text with Longhorn players who are like yeah. congratulations you're a homecoming game for two years you yeah, know yeah, yeah. Oh, do you want to yeah. put Archie through that yeah do you let him hopefully they can let him grow into the role I yeah. don't know how much money you get paid to go to Texas <laughs> like, I more than we get <laughs> God NIL, bless them. the NIL is crazy God bless them as they should it's crazy yeah, yeah it no there's yeah. Yeah. but they haven't disclosed it. Anything about well, how who's, much? Who was that? Spencer Rattler. That bum got a million dollars in Oklahoma to, from a Mercedes dealership. Oh yeah, yeah. He couldn't hit that wall with football. I know. And he went to South Carolina. Got paid Jesus, even more. Jesus Christ! My friend is uh, oh, huge in South Carolina football. Yeah. Every Saturday, I was, Spencer Rattler's ruining South Carolina yeah. football. And then they won a couple games, beat Tennessee, and I just I know, of, right? Yeah, I know. Hey, but I'm not saying he's not a baller. I'm just saying it's just like well, it's just yeah. crazy. Like he came into college football, you know, because he had that uh that. QB1. QB1 mm-hmm. documentary coming out, and yeah. he was the greatest thing to ever come in. And Either loved him or hated him from that documentary. Exactly, and I I, I kind of swayed to the dislike. Say, absolutely. Just because I thought he was He's a prick. cocky, and yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I would be too if I was you know, yeah five-star sure. recruit. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But it is crazy to see with these kids, before even stepping on campus, yeah. what they're getting. Jesus, right. Yeah, I mean, Life-changing, though. I mean, yeah. there's no there's no question about it. We were it. talking about that today. It's like it's a lot of, a lot of pressure to put on a kid as a dude, as a man. If you're lucky, yeah, you don't know who you are until you're 25 or 26. Oh yeah, yeah, and you, that's why these kids and you're go, still figuring life out then too. Oh, I'm still figuring yeah. it out now. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. But it's uh, it's a lot of pressure put on these kids, and 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 these colleges are making so much money off their jerseys, their yeah. ticket sales, obviously from them. Yeah, they should be as you as you. Oh agree. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they I mean, when you use from. likeness, and I, I'm good friends with Maurice Claret, man. He's a perfect example of like a university, like exploiting him and taking advantage of his name and yeah. likeness and he not even seeing a penny. And I, I also believe it elongates the college career, lets yeah. them stay in so they can afford to have mama house or yeah. you know yeah. 
and, and let's college be college. I mean, we're we're not all going to be the dude from Georgia, be thirty six years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, it's business, right? And Straight not not, not yeah. why not let the kid learn a little bit of entrepreneurial spirit coming in and yeah. using his brand and his take life a little pressure advantage. off and not knowing that knowing you could shine for four years instead of one or two and having to go. Yeah, because a lot a lot of these kids will never play in the NFL. Hundred percent. Yeah. So they may never yeah. like Johnny Menzel. If you would have had the NIL back then. Give him another two years of mature and get all the you know I know Johnny yeah. Mac I mean yeah. he was dude's a maniac but he, that's part of his that's part of his uh, his likeness yeah man. people people are allured yeah. by that the and kid's he's... still a winner yeah yeah but, yeah but he came in you know in a who was the quarterback from Austin that you know, University of Texas um, McCoy. Oh yeah, Colt McCoy. I mean, he couldn't see where the offensive line. You know yeah. what I mean? But he was that kid that was yeah. straight and narrow. Yeah, and he and I'll still never still in the league. Yeah. I know for Washington now. No, he was with Since Arizona was last year. That's I right. Think. He backed yeah. up Arizona. Yeah, I'll never forget when he got he had that concussion. And he lined up one one right of the deep did, snap. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, "Dude, I didn't know I was on the field." Yeah, you know? that's wild. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Well, as we wrap things up real quick. Um, <laughs> To any young aspiring DJ, like what is like? I know you've kind of gone a different path, yeah. and may, were there other paths that you could have gone? Yeah, I just I think if whatever it is you're going to do in life, whether it's football, baseball, parenthood, or whatever, just be you, man. Yeah, just and don't let the word no offend you. If it wasn't Nashville, where would it have been for you? Vegas, Vegas. Yeah, and if it wasn't Vegas, L.A. or Miami, Miami, Miami probably. Yeah, yeah. So any 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 young DJs out there that are trying to make it? I mean, what? How did you do it for yourself? Did you were you persistent as far as like marketing yourself? I did it all. You did it all. Like for me, I did. I have. I had an agent. I have an agent still. But yeah. like early in my career, I was. Nobody sells you better than you. Yes, if you don't believe in yourself, no That's one it. else will. And I was sending my YouTube highlights out on Facebook yeah. to anybody that I could. I mean, did you kind of do that? You have. You have. You, this day and age has the world by the balls. Yeah. You can literally edit, clip, shoot. Yes. You can have it to the world in ten minutes. Yes. And you know, and I pick the phone ups. I beat up the phones. I follow up with text messages. Yeah. Um, give me a shot. Give me a chance. And, yeah. And out of ten yeses, you're gonna have twenty no's. Yeah. And you take the most out of those opportunities you can and grow on it. And you make the people that say no wish they would have said yes. So what? What venue or what? station or what person gave you that shot that felt like you you took the next step um my first gig with mtv we did club bounce okay dude i couldn't i couldn't mix two records yeah but they're like you had the look we're looking for and the energy and everything and i i just realized right then i was like i'm gonna make the most of this i want to learn you know a lot of people come in and younger people they have i do this better i'm this i'm this yeah you you got you just gotta knock that chip off because i don't care who you are how tough you are what you do there's somebody better than you yeah oh yeah you're never going to be the best you can be the best that you can be which yeah which i'm still trying obviously but yeah but it's just you just constantly try to grow you try to learn uh you're never too good to shake a hand you're never too good to be friends with somebody and you just you know always keep the open door communication. You're never too it. good to burn a bridge either. That's facts, man. Sometimes you got to yeah. just walk, just and be the bigger man and just suck it up. Say, dude, listen, yeah. man, I messed up last. Night. I apologize yeah, to yeah. you or liquor talk for me a little bit too yeah, much. Or, yeah, yeah. But yeah, just to be true to yourself and be who you know you can be. You don't have to be what's cool, you know. And I will tell you this in Nashville is like, if I hear one more record label is like, dude, I need you to be like Jelly Roll, TikTok. Yeah. Talk. Well, you know why Jelly's successful because he's Jelly. There's yeah. one Jelly. He's role. authentic. He's authentic. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a 40-year-old dude. I don't mean trending on TikTok. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like, it just be who you are. Be true to who you are. And and, and if it is true, it wins. It's yeah. going to win. So as as you've been into the country scene now for quite some time, how have you seen the industry change and shift from, you know, early Aldine to, you just mentioned Jelly Roll making a scene now, yeah. making his mark on country music? That's the proof of, uh, that's proof. Party. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know? That is the proof of the the age we live in. All this stuff it started. The record labels would say no. Every record label turned yeah. Jelly down. But the internet and social media was his 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 impact was undeniable. Yeah, and it made those people that said no yeah. change their mind to say yes to it. Yeah, and you got Ernest coming in on the scene. I what, mean, all these all these guys are just yeah. kind of just the in, in these. It's going to be a five or six years. For, run where it's hopefully more where it's hardy Ernest and wallen uh, will run things yeah yeah absolutely i mean they're yeah. making their mark for sure i mean That's obviously it. wallen is wallen but when like you think back it was five or six years ago it was luke thomas um luke brian thomas aldean yeah and dallas davis wrote everything that was ever on the radio yeah and, and it goes in it goes in waves and i and, and, and 
Well, because Hardy writes, Ernest writes. And it's such as pure talent. It's yeah. good stuff. Even what, their does, bad stuff. Does Jelly stuff. Rule write? Yeah. Yeah. He wrote all stuff. Yeah. I don't know if he wrote all the stuff, but he yeah. writes for sure. But you're starting to see these guys kind of immerse now as yeah. their own artists and, yeah. and take credit for. You know, and, I, and, I will, and I will say, and it always bothers me, is when I see these people trying to be somebody else. Yeah. You yeah. will never win at life trying yeah. to replicate somebody that's already there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, just be the best that you can be. And it's like, it may work for them. doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's cool. That's cool, man. Well, I appreciate you jumping on here, yeah. learning more about you, get to spend some time with you, man. Enjoy the last few days of your yeah, off season, right. man. Excited, yeah. Cause it's <laughs> coming March, man. You're hitting the road running, huh? Hard. All right. We got, uh, I think we have 17 cities in March. One, one city is 10 straight days. So, so yeah, there's that. That's cool, yeah. man. And then, man, hopefully you're uh, performing at, uh, in Vegas at the Super Bowl when the, the, the boys are in it. It's huh? already done. I can't. Let me tell you right now, if the Dallas Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, it's going to, yeah. People DJ Silver is going to leave his mark on Vegas. I've already, so listen, I've, I've already said, so look, Hickman, if I'm not doing every Super Bowl party, <laughs> we're breaking up. <laughs> you <laughs> might have to have you in the locker room pregame. I'm in. Spinning it, man. I'm in. Let's go, I'm man. In, I appreciate yeah. you, bro. Thanks again, man. Appreciate you, brother. Good to see you. You too.